Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. So last week was my birthday and you forgot to get me something. It's okay, my parents did remember, and this is this box right here. This is a birthday present from my parents that I asked them to send over. I come from a pretty big family, I had four siblings all together, and a couple months ago I texted them and I said, hey, what do you guys think about if mom sends me the Nintendo and I keep it at my place? And all but one of the siblings replied and said, sure, no problem, we don't care at all. One of them never replied, so maybe he's mad about it, we're not sure, I'll have to ask him later. Anyway, they sent me this box here, it just came in the mail today, and I decided to unbox it in front of everybody. I haven't looked in this box in many, many years. I really actually don't really know what's going to be in here. But I do know for sure there's going to be a Nintendo inside, and it's going to be our family gaming system. We got this in 1985, so 37 years ago when I was a little kid, this Nintendo that's in here was a new addition to our family. And so I imagine that that Nintendo is going to be in here as well as some of the games we picked up over the years. And I think there's going to be a Super Nintendo inside here too. Now I didn't grow up with a Super Nintendo, we had a Genesis and a Sega CD, but I always wanted one. And so I remember in my 20s I was stationed in Texas and super bored, and I went to a pawn shop and I bought a Super Nintendo and a few games. So I think I took that to my parents' house at some point, and it was in the same box with the Nintendo. And so I do think the Super Nintendo is going to be in here. It obviously is not going to have the same nostalgic feeling as the Nintendo, but that's what I'm expecting to unbox here. It's going to be the Nintendo, as well as the Super Nintendo and all the games I played growing up. Now the other day I was thinking about how long has it been since I've actually looked inside this box and looked at the games we had. And to be honest I'm not really sure. I moved out you know like 25 years ago from my parents house so it's been a very long time. But I'm excited to see what we have inside and kind of walk down memory lane. So without any further delay let's jump into it. Okay, so let's get started. I'm actually going to record this live, so I'm recording the vocals as well as the video at the same time, which is something I normally don't do for my videos. So we're just going to kind of play this by ear. And so this is the box here. It is nearly 15 pounds. It cost my parents almost 60 bucks. They haven't bought me a Christmas present in years, so maybe it's overdue. Anyway, we're going to open up the box here and see what's inside. I did not tell my parents ahead of time that I was going to unbox this, so there might be some like underwear or something in here. I'm not really sure. Anyway, let's just open it up. Like I already see they put my address here, so let me hide this part. Okay. Now let's actually open it up. Oh man, look at all this. This is kind of not what I was expecting. All right, let me uh, move this out of the way. Get a better look here. Okay, so as expected, the Super Nintendo is here. Uh, let's open that one up first. Let's see what we have. This thing is yellow. Look at that. Man. So yeah, I bought this probably um, maybe 2001, I think. And uh, played it for, ah, I don't even know, like maybe a few months and then just took it over to my parents. But this obviously needs some restoration work. I don't really know how to restore anything, but... Uh, this is a good project to figure out. You can see here it's all cracked uh, all over the place. So it's cracked here, got some cracks here, even over here. So a lot of work to be done on that one. Got a controller. Here we got a power connector. I'm not sure if this is the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo one. We'll have to see. I'm not really sure. You know, over the years we probably had to get these replaced at some point, so this is maybe a replacement one. We'll figure that out. Oh man, so this is like literally one of our D-pads from 1985. Ah, oh, it's crazy. It's funny, the travel on these are not as great as I remember them being back in the day, and it feels really loose. You see how much it moves around in there. The buttons are fine. Yeah, I could definitely use this. Looks like the same story with this other one. It is also really loose, just kind of the D-pad here. Probably needs a new rubber membrane. I don't know how restoring works, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so this is like our original Zapper. As you can see, it's labeled 1985 Zapper here. Now, when we got our Nintendo, which we'll open here in a second, it came with both the Zapper and Duck Hunt as well as Gyromite and Rob the Robot. 
So I never had Super Mario Brothers, like the original okay. one. Uh, we had Gyromite instead, and we hated that game. Like, it was just terrible. Anyway, we'll talk about that more when I look at the games themselves. But yeah, here's the zapper. It's in pretty good shape. Huh. So it looks like this is the only connection cable here in terms of actually connecting it to video. So I probably are going to have to buy new cables. This is some sort of RF switch. I'm not even sure what this is for, but we'll figure that out. Okay, let's look at the NES itself. Oh my gosh, I remember this sticker. <laughs> this is like from like one of our trapper keepers or something. Oh my goodness. Oh, so it is covered in dust. This, oh, it's grimy. I don't know if you can see my hands, but man. I remember this red marking too. Like that was from back in the day. Holy moly. Yeah, it's an NES. It feels big, you know? I'm used to just little handhelds and stuff. This thing is a monster. It's bigger than most of the PCs that I review on the channel. Oh, it's amazing. Copyright 1985. Now, people might know, you know, like, this is NES 001. They might know what that means if there was other things, you know. Uh, you can see here, using this AC adapter only. Uh, yeah. That's funny that it has a phone number here for inside Washington State. I'm originally from Washington State. Like, this is an area code that I'm familiar with. So I don't know if that was only for, you know, Washington State NESs or just in general, just because, you know, people didn't like dial long distance back in the day. So who knows? Man, there's even cobwebs over here. That's how old this thing is. Okay, now let's look at the games. Uh... You know what I'm actually going to do? I'm going to pull them all out, and then I'll just take them one at a time. So let me pull all these out. We'll have a look at them. And you know what? I can actually zoom in a little bit, too. So let's zoom in. Okay, so here are the games. I zoomed in a little bit. And so I'm just going to kind of open up each of these and take a look at them and talk about it a little bit. So we already talked about Gyromite, but yeah, this one is the pack-in that came with our device. We had this one as well as Duck Hunt. And we hated this game. Like this game is, if you've ever played it, it's like a puzzle platformer. And uh, it, you know, you have to use the robot to like move these discs around and then that would open up the red or the blue doors. And we like broke the robot in the first week. Like we never used the robot. But luckily you could actually use a second controller to control the doors. So it had to be a two player game in order to play it like efficiently. The problem is we hated it. So we couldn't actually get each other to agree on playing this game. And so I don't know, I like never really played this game at all. Even though it is 37 years old, it does not have a lot of game time with us. Okay. Oh my gosh. Shadow of the Ninja. So you've probably seen me show this on the channel quite a few times because we got this game at some point I'm not even sure how old this game is. You can see it still says 1985. It wasn't a later game. Like, we probably got it in, like, 88 or 89. The thing is, like, this game's actually pretty fun. Uh, it's kind of rare. I, I, you know, I don't see it very often, but we really enjoyed playing this one, and it did have a two-player component to it. There were also cheat codes inside of it. Like, we kind of figured some of those out. I'm not really sure how we knew about them, but we figured out ways to use cheat codes as well. So this was a really fun game, and we enjoyed this one a lot. Now, we also had Top Gun. Man, look at how dirty this thing is. Anyway, so Top Gun was another one we actually didn't really enjoy. Uh, I think that the title and the movie itself just kind of inspired us to get it. And maybe because it was a Konami game, like we all loved Konami games, Contra and Gradius and things like that. But this game was not fun. Those missiles like flying at your face and stuff, you have to shoot the missiles down. Oh, and then landing, like landing in Top Gun was such a pain. Anyway, so we didn't play this one that much either, but I will say that when we were really bored, like on a rainy day or whatever, which happened a lot where I'm from, we would just play this game until we would beat it. You know, like we would play it so much that we actually got good at it, even though we didn't really enjoy it. Okay, so here's Duck Hunt. I mean, no surprise here, but this one also came with our console, and we did play this one quite a lot, you know? We would always do that thing where you have the blaster, and you're sitting back a few feet, and then when you get to the higher levels, you basically just put the gun against the screen of your TV so you can shoot as quickly as possible. We played this one a lot. We always were told that, you know, at some point, if you got far enough in the game, you would actually be able to shoot the dog, and we really wanted to shoot that dang dog, because it laughed at us all the time, and so it never actually happened, but man, that would have been cool if it really had happened. But that was one of those things that kind of just circulated in the 80s when people talked about games. Uh, I'm not sure what this game is. I've never seen it before. This is not a real game. So 
Uh, yeah, I don't know that. I've never seen this one before. Oh, and so Dragon Warrior. Um, we actually didn't own Dragon Warrior. This is something I must have rebought later on in life because we we didn't have this one. This one came free with Nintendo Power back in the day, and I had a friend who had this, and so we went over to his house and played this. I never actually owned this game. I'd be curious to see what kind of save games are on this, but yeah, this is one that probably picked up later in life, and that's probably why the uh, label looks a little bit cleaner than the others. Anyway. Okay, and so Muppet Adventure. This is another one we had, and I think my mom may have bought this one for one of my younger siblings because we were a bit old for this one when it came out. This one's interesting. It's, uh, well, first off, it's a terrible game, but it has like four different like levels to it, and you can play as like Kermit and Miss Piggy and I think Gonzo maybe. I'm not really sure. I remember one of them being like a river rafting level and... I think that's about all I remember. Uh, we didn't enjoy this one either, but like Top Gun, we did play this when we were super bored. So I do remember playing this one a lot, even though we didn't really like it. Now, there are other NES games. They must have just got lost over the years, but I remember we had Mario 2. Like, that was the ultimate game we played. We also had Life Force, which was the sequel to Gradius, and so we played that one all the time as well. We were able to use the Konami code on that one, so we really enjoyed that one. Uh, there are probably some other NES games I grew up with, but they've probably been lost over the years you know, loaning them out to a friend or whatever. So let's quickly go through the Super Nintendo games. Like I mentioned, I only bought these, you know, 20 years ago or something like that. So they don't have that nostalgic kind of feel from when I was a child. But at the same time, I do remember like picking and choosing certain Super Nintendo games and for a certain reason. And so, yes, it's not like 37 years behind in the past, but this is 20 years ago. So let's see what these were. Okay, Chess Master. Believe it or not, I did not have a chess board as a kid, and I always wanted to learn, but it seemed like something that was just kind of a little bit too hard to actually figure out. So I remember once I had like moved out on my own, I had joined the Navy and I had my own income and stuff like that, I bought Chess Master because I was like, this is going to teach me how to play chess. And it actually did. Like I learned how to play chess from this little game here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's any good or not, but I do have some good memories with that. Okay, Simmerth. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is because, like, back in the day, I remember my friends had, like, a Macintosh, and they had SimCity, and it looked so cool, you know? And so when I got Super Nintendo, I was like, all right, well, SimEarth must be bigger than SimCity, so I'm going to enjoy it even more. And I, like, turned this game on, played it for five minutes, and I was like, what have I done? Like, this is not a game that it aged well, even if it was 10 years after it had released. It was just not a fun game. So I don't have any memories, really, of playing this game at all. Okay, so Super Street Fighter 2. So this was a big deal for me back in the day, too. We had, uh, I had a friend who had a Super Nintendo, and I remember we rented, like, the original Street Fighter 2 for the Super Nintendo, like right when it came out. And we played that thing to death over like one weekend. Like we didn't even like sleep. We were just playing it all night. And so I kind of wanted to recapture some of those memories and Super Street Fighter seemed like a better deal because you had those four extra characters. And so this is a pretty good game. I think it's a pretty good port. Obviously the arcade is much better. You have better sprites and music and stuff like that. But this was a pretty solid game back then. And of course, Super Mario World, like I loved this one as well. Uh, I have good memories of this too. I had a neighbor when I was real young. So probably, you know, 1992 when the Super Nintendo first kind of came out, he had a Super Nintendo and also had this game. And I've talked about it on previous podcasts, but this kid was kind of a liar. Like he always exaggerated all the time, but he said, yeah, I got a Super Nintendo and I've got Mario World and I did not believe him. But I went over to his house one night and I was like, sure, let me see it. And he had it and it was just crazy. And we played it. And man, these graphics were so intense. Like they were so good compared to Mario 2 and any of those other Mario games that came out. It was just amazing. And so I have really fond memories of that. Sadly, I've never really gotten very far in this game. I've gotten to the point where like, you know, you get Yoshi and you defeat the first castle or whatever. And I've never really gotten further than that because after that, the game kind of forks into like these different levels where the world like map itself like can go in different areas and each of the little dots that signify a level can be red. And if they are still red, that means you haven't unlocked all the secrets. And he used to drive me nuts that I couldn't figure out the secrets for each of the levels. And so I would just try and try and try to find the secrets. And so it used to just drive me crazy. It's not a very good conducive game to my personality type. Someday I need to sit down and beat this game. 
Okay, Killer Instinct. So this one I also bought on purpose when I bought the Super Nintendo, and that's because I have fond memories of playing this game in the arcade. Now, this game itself, Super Nintendo-wise, not great. Like, the sprites are not so cool or whatever, but the arcade version was super cool, and I remember just seeing those really long combos, and then they have, like, those pseudo-fatalities and stuff, and there was blood. Like, it just had a lot of cool things that I really loved about fighting games at the time. And so I kind of tried to recapture that. I like the fact that the cartridge itself was black, too. It's kind of cool. Uh, I didn't play it too much. I think I memorized some of the moves for like Orchid and then I just kind of stopped. Anyway, there's Killer Instinct. Okay, a couple left. So this is Tecmo Super Bowl. I love Tecmo Super Bowl on the NES. And now that I think about it, we had it for the NES back in the day too. So that's one of those missing games. And I figured, hey, you know, updated graphics and stuff, this will be even better. So I grabbed it on the Super Nintendo. Turns out that I actually really enjoyed the NES version more. And I think a lot of that has to do with the nostalgia, the music and the graphics and things like this. This one just didn't have that same connection. And by this time, you know, the Dallas Cowboys were super good. And so they're like the best teams and stuff. But back in the day, I was a 49ers fan. And so I think that's one of the reasons why I like Tecmo Super Bowl is because I could do like Joe Montana and Jerry Rice and just like dominate in the game. Okay, a couple more. So this is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Now, we had a Sega Genesis growing up. I think I mentioned that in the intro. And so we had Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 and actually Mortal Kombat 3 back in the day. I was a big fan of those games. And I loved the fact that the Genesis ports, like, you know, the blood code and all those things that happened when Mortal Kombat 1 came out, like the blood was just so much cooler in the Sega Genesis version. And so that was one of those times where it was cooler to have a Genesis. And so when I got my Super Nintendo, I thought, well, I'll try Ultimate Mortal Kombat 2 and see what it's like. But it turns out, you know, at this age in my life, you know, in my 20s, I didn't have the patience to memorize all the combos and things like that. And probably I should have just got like Mortal Kombat 2, you know, one that I'd already memorized. But either way, it was just kind of fun to reignite that passion again. And finally, last one here is like not significant. It's funny that this is the last one. This is NBA Live 96. Now, I actually watched people play NBA Live 95. Like I mentioned, we didn't have Super Nintendo, but I did have friends who had one and they had Live 95. And the graphics on that were so cool. They were so much better at the time than like the other games on the Genesis. Bulls versus Blazers was a really important one. And then also like Jordan versus Bird. Those are like the Genesis basketball games that I remember the most. And when this one came out and it had that like three quarter perspective to it. It was just super cool and the graphics were really nice. And so again, you know, many years later when I got a Super Nintendo, I ended up grabbing this one too. Turns out that, you know, the nostalgia and kind of just pining after a game sometimes is better than actually owning the game itself. But either way, it is kind of cool to have this in my collection. So that's really about it for this video. I just kind of wanted to walk through and open this stuff up. Man, that was a flood of emotions when I was looking at the NES games and uh, it was just kind of cool, you know. I do want to restore some of these games. So if you have any tips on things to do, I've heard that there are special solvents you can use to like restore like the yellowing on a cartridge or a console and things like that. Let me know if you have any uh, suggestions in the comments below. I'd be really interested to hear about it. And if you know anything about this game, if you know what the heck this one is, let me know, because I've never seen it before and I'm not really sure how my parents got it. I think this may be some sort of practical joke. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me and talking about video games as opposed to guides and reviews and things like that. As always, thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.